Hi guys, my name's Abby. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today we are pressure canning two different recipes to put 16 meals onto the pantry shelf. So I'm really looking forward to having these on hand for quick and easy meals. This is a great alternative to freezer meals. And the two recipes that we're gonna be canning today are pot roast in a jar and chicken and gravy. So the original recipes just make two quart jars each. So we are quadrupling both recipes. Um, and with my canner size, I'm gonna have to run it three times today because I can only hold seven in there. We're gonna be doing eight of each. So let's hop in. We're gonna start out with the chicken and gravy. So both of these recipes are gonna be included in the description box down below if you wanna try them yourself. Now, the chicken and gravy recipe, it calls for um, mixing everything together in a bowl. I am just gonna portion everything into each jar just to save myself one dish and to make sure that everything's evenly distributed. So we're gonna go ahead and add half a cup of potatoes to each of these jars. Next up, I'm just adding half a cup of celery to each of these jars. And you'll notice that neither of these recipes have any sort of thickener like flour or starch in them. Um, those are not considered safe to can with. And so what we'll do is we'll thicken the gravy with, I'll use some arrowroot powder. You could use cornstarch or flour when we go to serve this. So we've got half a cup of potatoes, half a cup of celery in each of these, and I'm gonna add half a cup of onions. Now, before we add the chicken, I'm gonna go ahead and add the seasonings just so it's not sitting right at the top there. And we're gonna be doing a teaspoon of salt into each of these jars. You could also omit the salt if you wanted. Um, it doesn't affect the safety at all or reduce it if that's your preference. If you're using like a store-bought broth or a bouillon for the broth that we're going to be adding a little later, um, you might want to use a little bit less salt. Okay, and then it calls for a teaspoon per jar of poultry seasoning. I don't have any poultry seasoning, so I'm just doing my own mix here of rosemary, thyme, and oregano. Uh, typically, poultry seasoning has sage in it, but sage can kind of taste a little off when pressure canned, so I'm just leaving that out. And um, marjoram would be more typical of a poultry season seasoning than oregano, but I don't have any marjoram, so we're doing oregano today. Okay, so there's a quarter teaspoon of rosemary in each of those, and we've got thyme. Again, if you're worried about the flavor of any of these herbs as they pressure can, you can leave them out and season when you cook them. It's just up to your preference. oregano and then I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of black pepper so when you heat this you could eat it as is or you could serve it over rice or mashed potatoes something like that um, but this is just gonna be so convenient to have on hand Okay, now the recipe calls for two tablespoons of white wine per jar. If you don't wanna use white wine, you don't have it on hand, then you could just do um, more broth. You could totally omit this as well. Okay. 
Oops. That one's got a little extra. Okay, and then we're gonna add our chicken. So it is about a pound of chicken per jar, and the recipe calls for raw chicken. I'm using cooked, and I'm doing that because we buy whole chickens. Um, we'll be raising our own chickens this year for meat, which I'm really excited for. So I just cooked this in the Instant Pot, and that's what I'm gonna be doing. But if you wanna stick to the recipe, just use raw chicken. And this is a little bit under the eight pounds that I need for these eight jars. So I'm just gonna make sure I try and evenly distribute this. And then we'll top this off with some broth. I just have it heating on the stove behind me. Now I'm just filling these jars with chicken bone broth to an inch of headspace. And I'm only gonna fill seven of these jars with broth right now because that's all I can fit into my canner in one go. And then that eighth jar we'll just include in one of the other batches that we can. Now I'm just debubbling these jars and then we will adjust the headspace, get these cleaned up really well, and then get them into the canner. Okay, so the headspace on those look good. I'm just gonna give these a really good wipe down with some vinegar. Um, for something that isn't greasy or isn't sticky, I'll just use hot water, but especially when you've got something like the chicken broth that has some fat in there, um, you wanna make sure there's no greasy residue on that rim, which could interfere with the seal. And then we're just gonna add the lids and the rings just fingertip tight. You don't wanna be cranking like that. That can cause the lids to buckle, um, which we don't want, so just fingertip tight. All right, these are all ready to go. I'm gonna get these into the canner and we're gonna process for 90 minutes since we're doing quarts. If you just wanted to do pints, you would just process for 75. Okay, so we've got our water in there and I just tried to match the temperature of the jars. And I'm gonna get these in there. We've got our rack at the bottom and then we'll get these going. So anytime you use your pressure canner, you just wanna to check to make sure that everything is clear through the vent pipe. So just take a look through there, make sure you can see through, and um, then we're good to go. So I'm just turning the heat up to high here, and once we see a steady stream of steam coming out of the vent pipe, I'll set a timer for 10 minutes, and after that 10 minute mark, we will put on our regulator and bring this up to pressure. So for me, at my elevation, and with this being a dial gauge pressure canner, I'm gonna be processing at 11 pounds of pressure. All right, now we've hit pressure. We're actually just over, so I'm gonna slightly lower the heat here and set that timer for 90 minutes. Okay, that first batch is done in the canner. It's just coming down from pressure. So I'm gonna put together the pot rows so we can get those into the canner as soon as those other jars come out. So I have my beef cubed into like one and a half or two inch cubes here in the bowl. and. Unlike that first batch, I am gonna mix all of the ingredients together in this bowl. So I'm gonna be adding to this um, four cups of carrots. Two 
two cups of celery. Four cups of onion. And then four cups of potatoes as well. I just need to drain those off. Also gonna add eight cloves of garlic. And then we'll get this mixed together. Now for seasonings, I'm gonna add eight teaspoons of salt. Again, you can adjust the seasonings as you prefer. Then four teaspoons of pepper. What's nice about these recipes is they do come together really quickly. The most time consuming process is just having them in the canner. Okay, and then eight teaspoons of thyme. Okay, and then we're gonna add four cups of wine, and if you didn't wanna use wine, that would be totally fine. Um, once we get these into the jars, we're gonna top them off with beef broth. So you could just leave the wine out and do more broth. So we're doing eight jars again, and I'm just adding a bay leaf to each jar, and then we're gonna add the beef mixture into the jars and try and evenly divide that wine uh, among the jars, and then we're gonna top them off with the beef broth. I definitely think that my preference is measuring out each ingredient into the jars. That way everything's just more evenly distributed. Um, you don't end up with one jar that has more vegetables or anything like that, but it's not a big deal. Once we've got all these jars filled, I'm gonna go back and adjust them. We'll add a little bit more to each jar and we do want them packed somewhat firmly. All right, now I'm just gonna get these topped off with the beef bone broth. And again, we're just filling this to an inch of headspace.
Okay, the canner has come down from pressure and I took the lid off about 10 minutes ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that chicken and gravy out of the canner and we're gonna get these guys in. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up here. We've got that second batch in the canner now. It is going to process for 90 minutes as well. And if you're doing pints, again, it would just be 75. Um, it is already seven o'clock. That one is just starting going and I'm gonna have a third batch to do after this. So it's gonna be a later evening tonight. I've got lots of dishes to get to. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.